electric. Well, it's end of the month time again. Welcome back for another video, September's end of month energy and solar statistics. As always, I'll present the numbers on how much solar we've been generating, what we've been using it for, and everything new that's been happening here. And as you heard last time around, quite a bit has been happening. September though, September's the month of change, isn't it? There's there's something about the month where it feels like summer, then it feels like autumn, and suddenly the cold comes on, and that's that's exactly what happened. The first part of September was brilliant. The first part of September, we had air conditioning installed, the air-to-air -air heating system, and it felt hot enough to use it for air conditioning. Then the second half of September, the cold weather came, and it felt like we needed heating on. Everyone's lighting fires, firing up the air source heat pumps, and we got to try out the air-to-air -air heating system as well. Now it's into October, just a couple of days into October, it's gone warm again, thankfully. So that cold spell, it's not quite autumn. Winter's not here, but it's the first sign. It's the first sign of what's coming our way. And that's what I'm finding with September. This is the first month that I'm looking at September's data and looking back to last September comparing to change because so much has changed. Um, I've got additional solar panels, those gable panels, the three panels on my garage roof. So I hopefully will see a difference in October and maybe September as to how much solar we're getting and how we're able to use it. I've also changed the hot water system here. We've got a mixergy tank now, so am I noticing a difference between last year and this year? And then the air-to-air -air heating system, the cooling system that we've got. How is that going to affect our winter heating? And it all starts. It starts in September because that's where the change is. Months beforehand, that was all solar excess. We had loads of excess. And to be honest, it's not really that fun shouting about how much excess you have. Um, you know, whether I've got a megawatt hour um, of generation a month or 1.2 or 1.3, it's all the same because to be honest, I don't need that much. That excess is feeding me later in the year. Later in the year when solar can be more scarce, that's what that excess was for. And that's where it's going to start to pay dividends, I think, from September onwards. So for me, this is a big month. This comparison is a very big month. Okay, let's get right to it. Here's the solar generation for the month, 758 kilowatt hours. And as you can see, at the start of the month, we had a couple of 40 kilowatt hour days. But most of the days there, you know, they're peaking above 25 kilowatt hours, but just a couple of 30s. So 25 looks like the number that happened mostly in September. But there's a couple of days there under 10 kilowatt hours. So that's quite a big drop from the last five or six months. But if you look at the line of 800 kilowatt hours there, then last year we were peaking at that during the summer. So getting close to that 800 kilowatt hour line with 758, I'm really happy with that. That third array is making a very good difference already. The breakdown for that starts with our 3.9 kilowatt solace array. This is the daily chart for that array. 387 kilowatt hours. The second Solus array that we have, 2.5 kilowatts, that's the inverter size, 149 kilowatt hours generated for the month. And this charts the daily values. Look at a couple of those there, under two kilowatt hours. Bit scary that. It's not very often I look at this chart, but this is the Solus combined view, looking at those two arrays together, 537.6 kilowatt hours in total. That leaves the solar edge array. That's a two kilowatt inverter with 2.4 kilowatts of solar panels. We generated 222 kilowatt hours for the month of September. The big observation that I take away from this is that I can see the Solus array didn't generate as much as it has in previous Augusts. Neither did the solar edge array, but collectively the three arrays generated more than any other August that I've had solar so far. More solar really works. Export for the month of September, 213 kilowatt hours. So we still had plenty of excess, even though solar was reduced from previous months. If I look at that number, 213 is a big drop from the previous months this year. But comparing to last year, 2021, you can definitely see that uh, even the higher months we were exporting similar amounts. So yeah, 213 export, that's quite a big number. The thing about export for this month is I actually struggled analysing this number because when I looked at this chart from my energy showing the consumption there in green and the export in yellow, there seems a definitive point in time around the 16th of September where we suddenly stopped exporting and I started using more. I couldn't quite figure out what that change was all about. Yes, from around that time there was slightly less solar. As I said, it started better in the beginning of the month. 
but also we used a little bit more heating because it started to get colder. But that really wasn't it. And it took me ages to work out. Actually, we went away on holiday before the 16th, so there's more export. And then when we came back, the car needed fully charging. So there's lots of solar charging needed to recharge the car back up. And that's primarily why we can see that difference, that there was export in the beginning of the month and there wasn't in the end of the month. We went on holiday in that middle bit. Anyway, I was just really glad to find out the answer as to why. Grid import for the month, that's 15.5 kilowatt hours. Should have only been 5.5 because on one day I went a bit mad and used the Octopus Energy Power Hour and consumed a whole 10 kilowatt hours in one day. Anyway, nice low figure, 15.5 kilowatt hours. How much money does that equate to? Thankfully, it's a nice low £17.23 for the month on the Octopus Go tariff. So that's 15 kilowatt hours, £17. Over a pound a kilowatt hour. Anyway, uh, the Agile tariff from Octopus would have been cheaper at £12.47, despite the unit rate averaging at 49.47 pence for Agile, and the average rate for me was 33 pence. Daily standing charge really makes a difference. Moving on to battery then, so it's our Victron inverter with Pylon Tech batteries. Um, I've got five 3.5 kilowatt hours, so 17.5 kilowatt hours gross. Um, this chart is a really good one to show what's going on. So forget the orange and red bars at the bottom that's showing um, consumption and solar generation. I'm interested in the blue at the top. So the darker blue line in the middle, that's the state of charge of the battery on a day by day basis. The top line and the bottom line, so the lighter blue shade is showing the bandwidth of where the depth of discharge was. Being right at the top, we were charged to 100%, and how far down it comes using the right-hand scale, we can see on one of the days there, it went down to 50-ish percent. In fact, 51%. On that day, 51 to 77% was the range of battery charge that we had. And you can see that on the very top of that chart, where you've got those white triangle gaps. That's basically where we didn't fully charge the battery from solar that day. So only three days in September, I didn't manage to fully charge the battery. I find that chart quite interesting. So where did all that wonderful solar energy go that we generated? Well, 180 kilowatt hours almost, that went uh, into the Zappi to charge up our two electric cars, the Mini Electric and the Volkswagen e-Golf. Hot water heating, just 90.23 kilowatt hours, solar and 2.6 heating via the grid. Well, when it says grid, that's just me doing a boost. So the Eddy records it as grid use, but it really was boosting using the battery and solar energy. But anyway, 92.8 kilowatt hours. Well, 92.8 is roughly 10% less, something like eight and a half, nine percent less than uh, what we used last month. But coincidentally, the Mixergy tank that we installed is about 8.5% to 9% smaller. We installed a 150 litre tank instead of a 170 litre tank. So the saving I've seen in September actually seems more related to the size of the tank. I'm really, really surprised that an old immersion heater covered in lime scale, never serviced for 16, 17 years, was performing, so it seems, as efficiently as a brand new immersion inside the Mixergy tank. So actually the savings that I'm receiving by buying that mixer G tank, I did actually expect it to be a little bit more efficient. I thought that lime scale um, would have somehow ruined the figures and made it less efficient. Apparently not. Apparently the saving that I'm making at the moment is based on just the tank size. I hope you picked up on those three important words though. At the moment, those are the savings that I've got. Heating and cooling for the month of September, that was a total of about 50 kilowatt hours made up of the Toshiba air conditioning systems, the air to air heating system that we have of 30.76 kilowatt hours, the dehumidifier we use on a regular basis, 15 kilowatt hours and bathroom radiators right down the bottom. So those are the three immersions into our bathrooms we installed, four kilowatt hours for the month of September, a total just over 49 kilowatt hours. The final things that we're monitoring with smart plugs, with energy monitoring, we've got a fridge, 16.52 kilowatt hours, our large TV in the lounge, again, 16 kilowatt hours, the e-bike, that's Charlotte's bike for commuting to work, 2.96 kilowatt hours for the month, a 
really is quite efficient. That does amaze me how little energy it takes on an electric bike. Then the microwave, we're not actually using a lot of energy in the microwave over a month, although I don't think that was fully installed until at least the end of the first, maybe even second week, I'm not quite sure, but a low number for the microwave, 2.3 kilowatt hours. Talking about consumption of energy, uh, I was a little concerned with our Toshiba units. They uh, consume on standby 14 to 15 watts on a continuous basis. Uh, on standby basically because they're hardwired. There's no physical off switch to turn them completely off. I'd have to switch the breaker in the garage to turn them all off. So 14 to 15 watts continuously all day if I don't use the units at all works out at about 320, 330 watt hours for the day, a third of a kilowatt hour. Over a month, that's nine kilowatt hours. Over a year, that's 100 kilowatt hours just for having the units turned on in standby. Quite a big number. So I'm a little upset that I've got this new base load, this extra 14 to 15 watts that I'd like to get rid of. But I've had some good news. I've had some uh, very fortunate news that... I've realized that I've been using too high an export number. On the Victron unit where I balance the grid to zero, I actually have been balancing it to minus 40 to get as little grid use as possible. And that's because of my previous testing when I had the pure drive battery. I thought minus 30 was about right. So I've gone with minus 40 because I can afford it. I've got a bigger battery. But I actually tried minus 10 recently and I gained really, really good results. So either the algorithms improved, either the Victron units improved, or something to do with the base load changing, the frequency of the electricity. I don't know. I don't know what's going on, but it balances to zero a lot better at minus 10 overnight. So I've been able to drop that. So I've gained back, <laughs> I've gained back an unbelievable 20 or 30 watts continuously trying to export. So I'm actually consuming during the day three tenths of a kilowatt hour more because of those standby units, but I'm gaining back two to three tenths a day on export that I'm not exporting anymore. And that's mostly exporting from the battery overnight. So I'm actually making some of that energy back again. Two electric cars. We mostly use the e-Golf this month. So 928 miles for the month in the Golf and just 357 miles in the Mini. And most of that was uh, Susan taking it out for an adventure to Essex. But uh, yeah, the Mini's not getting used as much. We do tend to pick up the Golf these days. Hmm... Thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video and all the statistics and uh, following the journey, what's been going on. I'd like to hear in the comments how you got on for the month and also what your plans are. How are you coping with this energy crisis? And what are you thinking about doing to help? To help yourself and to help everyone else. We need to get off gas, get off oil and uh, move on to renewable energy. And there's all sorts of things you can be doing. Love to hear what your ideas and thoughts are and what sort of progress you're making. Take care. Thanks again for watching. See you again soon for more videos, solar panels, home storage batteries, electric cars, and all that great stuff. And by the way, um, I did film a, uh, a demonstration of me going through collecting my data and my talk through of what I was observing at the time I was taking it through. It's quite a long video, haven't quite finished editing it yet, but I'll put that up as well for those people that are into the data, into the geeky side of it, and want to see behind the scenes on what I do to prepare for this video. I'll put that up later as well. Take care. Bye for now.